chemical has a powerful kick. You think the motor will stand it? It's the strongest motor ever built, and the fastest. Uh, thanks to your scientific knowledge. I am satisfactory as a valet, too. Perfectly. It was a lucky day for me when I rescued you from that native in Singapore. He tried to kill me because I am a Korean. You shall never be sorry you saved my life. You've repaid me many times by your faithful service, Kato. Thank you, Mr. Britt. Well, have you tried the new horn? Listen. It sounds like the giant green hornet we encountered in Africa. Everything about this car is most unusual. Yeah, you're right. It was all built here in secret. When I spring it on the world... Everybody will be most surprised. Yeah, and it'll prove to that skeptical old dad of mine that I'm not just a playboy. Uh-oh. We've got to leave. Axford will be looking all around for us. Breakfast is ready. Breakfast, is it? Suffer and snakes. Here it is after 10 o'clock, and Britt Reed, boss of a metropolitan newspaper, is not out of bed yet. Morning, Michael. Breakfast ready? Why didn't you call me? Call you? Sure, I've been knocking at your door for hours. Michael, my father originally hired you as a reporter. Yes, sir. And somehow you became my bodyguard? Yes, sir. And under the circumstances, do you think it's right to try to wreck my father's building by breaking down the doors? Ha, ha, go on with you. That's no way to treat an old cop like me. Morning, Miss Case. Good morning, Mr. Reed. If it is still morning. Well, it's never afternoon until you've had lunch. Oh, wasting carbon. Most inefficient. You seem to forget that this paper is being run despite the lack of a top executive. You think you were my father's secretary for five long years. Which reminds me, you have an appointment with two of your father's old friends at 11.30. Judge Stanton and the police commissioner. I wonder what they want to see me about. To compliment you, no doubt, on those scathing editorials attacking the racketeers of our great city, which you haven't written. Well, which if I had written would have been a very ineffective gesture. Jenks is in there waiting for you. Morning, Jinx. Oh, I got the drop on a great scoop, boss. What is it? Uh, the Billings Dam project. Old stuff. No, it isn't. I got it straight. The whole project is being constructed with cheap undergrade material and condemned machinery. Where'd you get your information? From one of the foremen. Disgruntled employee, huh? Oh, no, boss. This is straight stuff. Well, let me take Clicker Binny and go out yeah, there and I'll... Get your feet wet. Forget it, Jinx. Okay. But we're missing a bed, I tell you. The men are here for that appointment, Mr. Reed. Show the law in, Casey. All right, gentlemen. It's a great honor. No, Britt. It was cold-blooded business. Yes, Reed, since you've taken over the Sentinel, we missed the editorials your father used to write. Yes, editorials that struck hard at rackets and crime. That slammed at the crooks in politics and kept the police on the run. Gentlemen, it was my father's privilege to run this paper as he saw fit. I think the same applies to me. It is my idea that a paper should reflect public opinion, not mold it. I also believe that law enforcement should be left to the properly constituted authorities. People must be made aware of conditions. Well, if things are so bad, why don't you do something about them? We're doing all we can. Law enforcement is difficult if public opinion isn't behind it. The Sentinel will back you, but it won't take the lead. That's for you to do. What are you waiting for? A modern Robin Hood to lead you out of the woods? Yes, Reed. That's just what this city needs, a Robin Hood. Miss Case, check the want ads and see if there's a modern Robin Hood looking for a job. I can see we're wasting our time. It's evident we can't arouse your fighting spirit as we could your father's. My father wore himself out fighting, and conditions are even worse today. I'm sorry, gentlemen. Good day. Aren't you ever serious? Why, Miss Case, I was never more so. This interview threatens to change the course of my entire career. <laughs> Modern Robin Hood.
I tried to give you the inside story on that the other day. Gunnigan, get some interviews with survivors. Check the permits and specifications of the building department. Yes, sir. Call on the families of the dead and injured and offer every possible aid. Yes, sir. Yeah, I've got an angle on that tunnel they're building under the river. Yeah, what is it? Well, a fellow named Gorman who works there claims it's being built with bad material and faulty equipment. Same as the building's dam was. Why should contractors deliberately build things that will collapse? Well, if I knew that, I'd have a swell story. Well, you have nothing definite to go on? No, but uh, I'm hoping to get something from Gorman tonight. I doubt if you will. I wonder if there is anything to that tunnel job. Gorman, for talking to a Sentinel reporter against orders. You bet your life I talked to a reporter. And I'm meeting him tonight to give him the rest of the story. I'll tell him this tunnel project is as big a death trap as that Billings Dam job of yours. That won't do either you or the job any good, Gorman. You look out for the job, Markham. I'll take care of myself. I have to take the low road. This one's closed for a blast. All right. Too bad. Bowman drove right into that blast. Yeah. Looks like it couldn't be helped. Read all about it. Was it murder? Read the details. Read all about it. Extra. Norman wants to tell a false and tunnel job. There's only one way to handle Reed in his paper, and the law doesn't enter into it. That it'd make a martyr out of him. Arouse a force against us to direct this business that we worked so hard to build up. Of course, the final decision rests with our chief, as usual. I promise to communicate with us, Eleven. Just that now. We're ready for your decision on the Britt Reed matter, sir. Handle it as we did the other two papers that tried to expose us. By the Sentinel. Reed's threatened investigation must be stopped. Right. The Sentinel is a powerful paper. Reed is a wealthy man. The price would be prohibitive. Nothing's prohibitive when it stands in our way. How long are we to take orders from this unknown leader? Until he decides otherwise. Well, I don't like it. That's enough, Grant. You'll be late for your appointment with Britt Reed. Appointment? Then you knew what the chief's decision would be. I strongly suspected it. You detailed two men to trail him? Two of the best, with special orders to be sure that he wasn't followed from Reed's. Well, the offer is very flattering. But just who are the men that comprise this syndicate you represent? Well, we're not quite ready to announce our personnel as yet. Well, then we can't go ahead with any deal. But I can report to my clients that there is a chance to buy? Yes, when I find out who they are. Goodbye, Mr. Grant. Goodbye, Mr. Grant. Grant. Look. Mike Axford. Reed Stooge. Following Mr. Grant. Why don't you look where you're going? Why don't you go where you're looking? Come on, come on, break up the huddle. What do you think you're at, a football game? All right, get it out of there. Come on, move it, move it. Yes, sir. Now what happened to the fellow I was following? And what do you think this is, a parking station? Get in and get out. All right, lad.
And when I looked around, Grant's car was gone entirely. Well, did you get the license number? I knew there was something I wanted to do. Oh, well, never mind. That confirms my suspicions about Grant, and Jenks has got a line on him. Reed tried to question me, but I was too clever for him. You're not as clever as you think, Grant. Why, what do you mean? You were trailed from Reed's. If it hadn't been for my foresight, you'd have been followed to this office. That proves Reed's suspicions have been aroused. The chief phoned orders for you to get out of town and lay low. I'll go about it at once. Don't leave any dangerous papers in your office. Right. Grant may break. Cover him every minute until he's left town. Like a blanket. This the way you want the mask, Mr. Britt? It's a marvelous job, Cato. Here's the gas gun I made. Well, are you sure the bullets won't kill? They just put people to sleep for a short time. Oh, you're a wizard. And don't forget, when I give you this signal, <laughs> cut the electric light wires. All right, let's go to the garage. Funny, isn't it, Cato? What, Mr. Britt? When we built this secret garage to construct our super speech, do we never thought it would become the lair for a modern Robin Hood? Are you sure our photoelectric cells will close the doors after we've driven through? Yes, they did when I tested the car. How fast will she go? Better than 200. <whistles> All right, Cato, we're going to introduce Mr. Grant and the world to the Green Hornet. <laughs> How did you get in here? Who are you? The Green Hornet. Green Hornet? Yes, Grant. Not very well known as yet, but I have hopes for him. What do you want? The papers you were ordered to destroy. I've just burned them. All of them? What about these? Oh, I see you burned the important ones. What right have you to see them? They contained important evidence that I mean to have. Well? You're going to tell me who ordered you to burn them. I'll tell you nothing. You'll tell me everything now. Why should I deal with a masked bandit? Hello? Hello, Grant. Speaking. This is Lou Markheim at the tunnel job. Yes, Markheim, what do you want? How am I going to handle these reporters that are after the Gorman story? Why ask me? Who else will I ask? You're still attorney for this outfit, aren't you? Why not ask the chief? I stand as much chance of getting to him as you do. All right, Grant, you do the talking now. Who are you working for? No, put that gun away. Tell me. I'm an attorney for a syndicate. I take orders from the... Dead. Sure, the Hornet killed Grant. But why, and who is he? Well, I'm betting he didn't kill Grant. I think the Hornet is the modern Robin Hood that this city needs. Well, I hope so. If you want to talk to that fellow Markheim at the tunnel job, we better get going. All right, Michael. Those pumps go on a number two. Okay, Markheim. Hello, Markheim. Can we go inside? You see the sign? No visitors. We're not visitors. We're the press. Even the press is barred from this job. Why? Is there something going on in there you don't want the public to know about? We've been on dangerous jobs before. Not as dangerous as this one. And you admit it's not safe. I admit nothing. Get out or I'll have you thrown out. You think you will. I'm sorry you won't cooperate, Markheim. It's 
Judging from Mark Iams' manner, I'd say there was something wrong here. So what will we be doing about it? That, my pugnacious Michael, remains to be seen. Well... That's the car we're looking for. The car of the Green Hornet. Police car following us, Cato. Turn on the energizer. A spook. I never saw a car move so fast. Ten men were with Gorman and number four quit. Yes, talk scared them off. Listen, have the new men been signed in the usual way? I'll keep the night shift to number four. Bye-bye. Who are you? The Green Hornet? Yes, Markheim. It was you who killed Grant. You know better than that. What do you want with me? I want you to take me through the compression lock and into tunnel number four. I can't. My job's here. You're taking me into tunnel number four. air pressure in the tunnel. 30 pounds. Now we can go in there and see what's wrong. See? There's nothing wrong in here. That air compressor is skipping. What's the matter with it? Nothing. Yes, there is. You know what would happen if it quit entirely, don't you? Come on, speak up. The air pressure would go down. These walls would cave in. You know that compressor's faulty, Markheim. You're doing the same thing you did at the Billings Dam, sacrificing human lives by using cheap equipment. I had nothing to do with the Billings job. Oh, yes, you did. I know all about it. You're not bluffing me, Hornet. You're as big a racketeer as any of them. And you admit you're one? I admit nothing. The compressor stopped. We got to get out of here before there's a cave in. Not until you get those workmen out. There's an alarm bell at the airlock. Jeff Markheim. Don't make any sign to those men. It'll cave in. We'll be killed. We're staying until you tell me what I want to know. What is it? Who are your partners in this construction racket? There's 12 of us. The others are... Yeah, come on. Who are they? I'll tell you outside. Take me out quick. The tunnel. We're staying here.
right, Mr. Brent? Yes, I'm all right, but we've got to get Markheim to a hospital. We had better be quick. He is sinking fast. Help me get him to the car. someone in the city building department. Oh, I'll say it does. The commissioner of public works has disappeared and the state has taken over the job. And the Sentinel certainly busted that racket wide open. You might give the Green Hornet some of the credit. You certainly admire that night riding mask bandit, Miss Case. Morning, Chief. Morning, Jinx. You're late, Mr. Reed. And I do admire the Green Hornet. I like any man who knows what he wants to do and does it. Maybe he's clearing away competition so he can start his own rackets. I don't believe it. The Green Hornet is just what this city needs. Anyway, he's just what the Sentinel needs. Have you seen the circulation figures? Well, that helps. What about those men that escaped from the tunnel? Have you located any of them? Nah, that bunch won't talk. After what happened to Gorman and Grant. I found out one thing, though. Every one of them was covered by a big insurance policy written by a broker named Mortensen and payable to the company that employed them. Do you mean that someone expected to make a profit if those men were killed? So that suggests a good editorial. Shoot. Gunning can put this in a box on the front page. And had it? Profit in death. They haven't accused Mortensen of anything. That doesn't mean they don't suspect him. We've got to stop these sentinel attacks. What have you done about Britt Reed? They've got two of our best men watching every move he makes. Watching him? With instructions to eliminate him when it can be done safely. Mortensen ought to be here now. I told him to come in at this time. Mortensen, you're late. Late, of course I'm late, with reporters lying in wait for me every way I turn. Who spilled the story about the insurance on those men? Markheim, maybe. Or the Green Hornet. You suppose Markheim told him the names of the rest of us? No, if he had, we'd have heard about it before this. Chief's waiting to give you your orders. Mortensen's here, sir. All right, Mortensen. Take all papers pertaining to the tunnel job and hide out at your country place until you hear from me. Wait. Get him back. I want to know what protection I'm to have against the Green Hornet. There are 12 of us in this thing together. Only 11 now. Markheim's gone. You better obey orders, Mortensen. The Chief's taking steps to identify the Green Hornet. Did you interview Mortensen? Oh, can't find him. His office says he's left town for a few days. Yeah, a lot of people have left town since that story broke in the tunnel, John. Oh, Mr. Reed, sure I found him. Found who? Martinson, the murdering cool. Wait a minute. We know his accomplishments. What do you have to say? I ain't seen him yet. <laughs> but he's at his country house on the Westwood Pike, seven miles out. The place is closed up, but I found his car in the garage. So that's what makes you think he's there? Yes, sir. And when a couple of thugs made up like gardeners run me off the place, I knew he was there. So now I aim to get my friend Captain Ridge of police headquarters. Wait a minute, Michael. We have no definite proof that Mortensen has done anything criminal. If we start making charges, we'll have a libel suit on our hands. Oh, sure, but I know that Martinson... Forget is... Mortensen and try to find some of those men that escaped from the tunnel. I'm calling it a day. See you tomorrow. How can I call it a day and go looking for people up at... Uh, I tell you, it just don't make sense. It's... That's all for tonight. Reed's gone to bed. We'll report to Monroe. Those men that were watching the house have gone, Cato. And the Hornet will talk to this Mortensen tonight, Mr. Britt? Yes, I believe he and his associates are taking out insurance on men in dangerous jobs so they can profit by their death. All right, Cato.
for you. Hey, I got a line on this fellow Martinson, and I want you to get out of him and question him. Still playing detective, are you, Mike? There's no evidence against Martinson to justify an arrest. Well, I'll get it. With the force behind me, I can shoot some tough questions at this guy. All right, Mike, take Tim with you and see if the man will talk. I'll send a couple more men after you. Okay, Captain. Let's go. I pick up Tim round and back. This is far enough, Cato. Throw off your lights and silence the motor. and be ready for a quick getaway. Martinson. The Green Hornet. Right. What do you want? I know you're one of the 11 racketeers in this criminal ring. I don't know what you're talking about. Come clean, Martinson. There's enough evidence in those envelopes to send you up for life. Who's the big shot back of this racket? Wait, wait. I'll talk. I asked the police to pay me a visit tonight. Ah, you don't want to see the police any more than I do. I'm the caretaker here. There's nobody home. Don't give me that line. We know Martinson's here. Go in, Tim. I'll keep this guy here. Did you see him, the green one? He held me up. Sit down. Who's that the cops bringing out? <laughs> Jeff, wait. I tell you, he was trying to force me to open my safe, and your siren sounded, and he ran out. Yeah? Well, that's a good story, but you're coming down and tell it to the chief. Come on. Andy. Come on, Mortensen. There's a car in the back lane. And I've got to find out who fired that shot. You'll get us all hung. Clear out. I'll handle this. Quick, officer. This man has been shot by the Green Hornet. Stand over there and don't move. Must be making a getaway. We were just telling this man how the Hornet was trying to rob me when he came back in the door and fired. Sounds fishy to me. That's right, Lieutenant. Mortensen didn't shoot me. It was... The Green Hornet. Now you know I'm speaking the truth. Rexus, 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 Green Hornet shoots down officer. Martinson exonerated. Rexus, 
The police dragnet is out for the Hornet, but so far nothing is known of the identity or whereabouts of the mysterious night riding bandit. That's a good story, Jenks. Oh, thanks, Chief. Not so good. I don't think the Hornet did the shooting, if he was there at all. Oh, he was there all right. Plenty of witnesses heard that Hornet siren of his when he left. Listen, Chief, I think the Sentinel ought to offer a reward for the Green Hornet. A reward for the capture of the Hornet? Yeah. Well, do you think that'll get him? I don't know about that, but it will certainly boost circulation. <laughs> you never lose sight of that end of it, oh, do you? Yeah. Oh, Brick, oh, oh. look. I took the police out there last night. And I suppose it was the Green Hornet that hit you. It was indeed, and when I wasn't looking. And anyway, I still think Martinson knows all about that racket. Yeah, and thanks to your bringing the police out there, he's been whitewashed. He can refuse to talk to reporters, and the police will vouch for him. Work out that reward idea and let me see it. Those are orders, Mortensen, direct from the chief. Andy will be at your place tonight. Remove all evidence and head for the border. Why should I run away? I've got the cops with me now. And the Green Hornet against you, since you laid that shooting to him. Yes, I guess you're right. Both Andy and I had better clear out. And remember, don't leave anything that points to the rest of us. Is Max for to sleep? He sleeps like a baby, but louder. <laughs> Good. Could you burgle a safe? Not burgle, Mr. Britt, but if it is necessary to open the safe, to uphold the law. That's the idea. It saved many lives. Are you ready? Yes, sir. All right, let's go. stuff. That's the car that escaped us last night. He won't escape us tonight. Shall I catch him? Later. He's headed for the state line and he'll stick to this highway. We'll take a look at his safe. like a trap. Too convenient. Lights on, safe open. Hand me one of those curtain cords. My right, sir. I guess Mortensen must have taken the papers we want. Let's go. Gas is pretty low. We'd better stop at the next service station. The Hornet, step on it. Move your gas 
a minute. Just an envelope. Now, Jed, if these were found, we'd all hang. She's slowing up to take on water. Pull up near the tank. that train.
Are you hurt badly, sir? No, just shaken up a little. Is he... Still alive, but unconscious. Here, help me get him to the car. We must get him to the police hospital. At once. <laughs> Grand jury's indicted Mortensen. Go on, what else? The indictment was based on evidence mailed to the district attorney by the now famous Green Hornet. The district attorney expects to uncover the higher ups for whom the insurance broker acted. They know you at the county jail as an attorney. Get to Mortensen and keep him quiet. That'll be easy. Mortensen thinks quite a lot of his wife and that boy of his. When you get through with Mortensen, go out to flying school and check with Bartlett on those aviation policies. Mr. Jenks, but I can't remember when. What's the matter with you, Gilpin? You've had plenty of training under a good instructor. Well, I guess I lost my head, Mr. Peebles. <laughs> sure was a bum landing. Listen, buddy, any landing you can walk away from is a good landing. <laughs> Every time you bring in a story, I can feel the circulation going down. You are through the papers. I can already see the Bartlett Flying School camping on our doorstep to cancel their advertising contracts. <laughs> Jenks antagonizing our advertisers again, Miss Case? Say, Mr. Reed, I was out of the Bartlett Field this morning, and believe me, that place ought to be investigated. Why? Well, they've had four fatal crack-ups. They don't give their students enough training before sending them out for solo flying. What's the idea? Well, the students pay for a training course which ends with their first solo. Believe me, they rush them through. Well, government regulations require a student to have eight hours in dual control machine before being allowed to solo. Sure they do, but with the school keeping the records, who's to know whether they have eight hours or five or six? Well, the students should know. Oh, all they care about is soloing as soon as possible and getting their certificate. Tell you, Mr. Reed, that's a racket of some kind. I'll go out there and take a look at it myself. Okay. You ain't figuring to do any flying out at this Bartlett place, are you, Reed? No, I just thought I'd go out and see how a flying school was run. Maybe you'd like to go up, Michael. <laughs> Not me. You couldn't get me up in one of them things of all the snakes in Ireland was after me. <laughs> well, airplanes are safer than autos. Oh, yeah? Well, take a look at that one. The crash must have killed him, isn't it? Maybe he inhaled the flames. No, I don't think so. There's something funny about that fire. Those flames didn't come from gas. But if there was no gasoline in there, what caused the fire? I wish I knew. Get a blanket from the car. Have you any proof of that? She wasn't Dick Barber's fiance. I was. But Miss Weaver, our reporter, was informed by officials of the flying school that Miss Josephine Weaver Allen was his fiance. They lied. Dick and I were secretly engaged for months. Well, where does this Josephine Weaver Allen come in? I was told at the school that they had named her as Dick's beneficiary. And your name is simply Josephine Weaver? Yes. I think I can help you, Miss Weaver. Only on one condition. What's that? That you stay out of the picture and don't say anything to anybody about this. I won't, Mr. Reed. Thank you. Miss Case, get hold of Axford for me. Tell him I want him to do some undercover work at the flying school. Anything else, Mr. Reed? Yes, get Barbara on the phone and make an appointment for me. Yes, sir. Well, Mr. Bartlett. Reliable instructors, government-inspected equipment, and adequate training periods. How do you account for those five fatal accidents? In flying an airplane, you haven't much time to make decisions. And you must be right the first time. 
Well, it's impossible to tell whether a student has that judgment in an emergency until he's gone up in the plane alone. Exactly. Well, that puts a different light on those crashes. You see, I was interested in one of the boys that crashed. Is that so? Which one? Dick Barber. I was also surprised to learn that his fiancée was this Miss Allen. I understood he was engaged to Josephine Weaver. I definitely know that Barber designated Miss Allen as his beneficiary. I wonder if I could see Barber's original application for insurance. You have it in your office, haven't you? Mm, no, that's on file with the insurance company. Oh, yes, of course. Well, thank you very much, Mr. Barlett. You've been uh, much more help to me than you realize. Did Bartlett find out the real reason for Reed's interest in the Barber crash? No. Reed seemed to know that Josephine Weaver was Barber's fiancée and not Josephine Weaver Allen. Well, get the Allen girl out of town at once. Right, I'll put Dean and Corey on the job. What's our destination tonight, Mr. Britt? We're going to call on a young lady, a Miss Josephine Weaver Allen. Keep quiet, Miss Allen. What do you want? Who are you? The Green Hornet. What do you want here? I want to know why you're posing as Dick Barber's fiance. Because I was engaged to him. You didn't even know him. You're going to have a hard time proving that. I'm not going to try. You're going to prove it to the district attorney. That's what you think. All right, listen to this. I've talked to Bartlett. You saw Phil Bartlett? Yes. Dick Barber named Josephine Weaver as his beneficiary. Your name was substituted on the application and you collected $10,000 in the insurance company. Did Phil Bartlett tell you that? I want that money. The double-crossing rat. Did he tell you I had to kick back with 9,500 of it? To whom did you give the 9,500? For whom were you working? All right, I'll really give you the lowdown. But first, we've got to get out of here. You're telling me here and now. But they're coming for me to take me out of town. We've, we've got to move fast. Are you telling the truth? Well, what do you suppose I'm packing for? You've got to get me away from here so they can't find me. Take her to the car. Trying to make a getaway. Able to drive? Two men grabbed a girl. Yes, I saw them. We've got to catch them. Hey, Corey, isn't that the car of the Green Hornet? It isn't after us. We'll soon find out. Swing around the next corner. Our only chance is to keep turning corners. Step on it. The Green Hornet. After it, Joel.
Katie into our car, quickly. It's too late, Cato. The girl is dead. Josephine Weaver Allen, Dick Barber's fiance, was killed last night. Really? Yes, the car she was riding in was run down by the car of the Green Hornet. Who's the authority for that statement? The police. They came up just as the Hornet car was making its getaway. Here comes Axford. He'll find out all about it for us. Sure, and I have found out all about it. You found out all about what? The Bartlett Flying School. I sent young Tanner out there to take up a course as a student flyer. What did he find out? He overheard a couple of mechanics talking. One of them says to the other, Gilpin's going up for his first night solo flight tonight, and the boss said to have 28-24 on the line near Hangar 2 at 10 o'clock, service special. Was that all he found out? It was not. The other mechanic says, boy, they're sure crowding it. It was on the other day that Dick Barber's plane was service special, and laddie, it was Dick Barber's plane we saw crash. So it was. Go to the cashier and get a check for Tanner, Michael. Oh, but Reed! This special service means murder. Go on, go on. You've been reading detective stories, Michael. Yes, sir, but... Uh, oh, for that... I beg to... The boy is losing his mind. When we get to the field, Cato, silence the motor and pull in behind hangar number two. I want to take a look at plane 2824. Y'all set me? Yep. All set to go. I gave a special service job, Gilpin. Oh, gee, thanks, Pete. You know, this flight means a lot to me. It means a lot to the school, too. You know, turning out good flyers. <laughs> when I make this flight, I'll be through training. I can get a job. Gee, I'll need a job, too. I spent every dime I had on this course. But once I'm working, everything will be Jake. Say, I can even get married, Pete. I suppose I'm wasting my time giving you advice. A flyer ain't got no business fooling with women. Oh, but this one's different, Pete. She's... Yeah, I know. Warm up your motor about five minutes before you take off. Hello, Mr. Bartlett, sir. This is Pete out at the field. Gilpin's warming up his motor to take off in five minutes. Yes, sir. 2824 has been specially serviced, sir. Don't worry, Mr. Bartlett, sir. Everything. Excuse me. You haven't? No, sir. The bro I gave him will leave him paralyzed for precisely 30 minutes. You're a marvel. Mr. Bartlett, sir, this is Pete again. You got to get out here quick. No, I can't tell you over the phone, but you got to get out here. Yeah, hangar number two, and hurry. He said he'd be here in about 10 minutes. We've got to... Gilpin must be in his plane now. I must stop him from taking off. You hide behind that desk. Bartlett comes, you know what to do. Hey, Gilpin, you're not going up in that ship. Who says I'm not? Green Hornet, huh? What do you want? I want you to stay out of that plane. Like fun, I will. I got a nice solo to do, and I'm gonna make it. Business is yours anyway. I haven't time to explain now, but you're not going up in that ship. No? Young Gilpin has nerve. First one that hasn't been afraid of the Green Hornet. Only those with a guilty conscience fear the Green Hornet, sir. I hated to guess him, but it was the only way I could save him. I left him alongside the hangar. He'll be as good as new in an hour. Bartlett. Pete. Pete, where are you? Hold it, Bartlett. Good 
Green Hornet. What are you doing here? I want to have a little talk with you. That's why I phoned you. So it was you tricked me out here. Well, what do you want? What's wrong with plane 2824? Answer me, what's wrong with plane 2824? There's nothing wrong with it. You're lying, Bartlett. You know there's something wrong with it. What is it? Nothing's wrong with it, I tell you. What is this all about, anyway? Time up. Excuse, please. Bring him on out. For the last time, Bartlett, what's wrong with this plane? Nothing, I tell you. All right. What are you going to do? Take you for a little flight. Not in this plane. Oh, yes, I am. Twenty-eight, twenty-four flies with its special service. Get this plane back on the ground. Why? It's in perfect flying order. No, it's not. It's suicide to fly this ship. Listen, if you set this ship down, I'll tell you what's wrong with it. You tell me before I set it down. We're staying up here until I find out. Put it into a gliding land. The gas is gone. Well, that's the special service. Insufficient gas. Get it down. Get it down. There's an incendiary bomb hidden somewhere in the plane. It's under the fire. That's your racket, huh? Well, you can collect insurance on both the plane and pilot. I'm forced to. I'm just one of the syndicates. Who's the head of it? Listen. You think you're going to get some information and then bail out. But it won't work. If, if you'll untie me and let me bail out with you, I'll tell you what you want to know. All right. There. Now tell me who's the head of this. Wouldn't you like to?
of the church. but unconscious. Smart, it's too smart to carry any dangerous evidence. Look what I found. This card may be a clue we can use. Pete, he's the mechanic that phoned to Bartlett. Let's get him back to his flying field. We may get enough evidence there to smash his racket. Take a look at that flyer I had to knock out with a gas gun. None the worse. This is what I hope to find. Evidence of how they made their incendiary bombs. This should convince even the district attorney. Carry this to the car. Hello? Hello. Is the district attorney home? No, we'll be back in a half an hour. Any message? No, no message. I'm bringing someone to see him. Uh, who is it? Oh, well, if you don't wish to give the name. On the plane. No, he's still around. It's too tough for me. I'm getting out. You better do the same. Yeah, I know, but he said that. Never mind what he said. Beat it while you got the chance. Oh. And keep under cover. Hello? Yeah, this is Ogden. This is Pete. The Green Hornet just caught Bartlett. He's taking the DA's home. Bartlett won't talk. Yeah, but he's got part of one of those bombs we've been using to burn the ships. Well, never mind. Get back to the Nutter's garage and lay low. Dean, get a hold of Corey and a couple of boys and take him down to the car right away. Yeah. <laughs> Attorney. 
He's not in. Stop lying and take me to him. Green Hornet. Keep away from that phone till you hear what I have to say. What do you want? To bring a racketeer and murderer to justice. This is Phil Bartlett, owner of the Flying School. His racket was to enroll students, insure them on the planes, and send them up in ships that were fixed to crash and burn. Of course, you can prove your charges. You'll find parts of an incendiary bomb in here. There are more in a locker out at the flying school. I'd advise you to send men out there to pick them up before they've been removed. I suppose your object in bringing this man to justice is to eliminate a dangerous rival. Perhaps, but the only thing that concerns you is that I brought him. <laughs> What do you say about this, Bartlett? Nothing, except I'm not going to take the rap for long. Who's in this with you? I'll talk at the right time. Mr. District Attorney, in lining up your case, I wish you'd see that Miss Josephine Weaver receives the insurance money she's been cheated out of by Bartlett and his associates. And don't forget to send men to the flying field to pick up those bombs. You'll also find a man tied up out there who's just as guilty as Bartlett. <laughs> this is the District Attorney speaking. Send a squad car to the Bartlett flying field immediately. Close the field and hold anybody you find there until I arrive. And send a radio car to my house. I've got the Green Hornet here. I admire a public official with courage. Calling car 92, calling car 92. Go to the district attorney's home. The Green Hornet is there. Hurry, that is all. Well, good luck with your case. I'm sure that breaking up another racket will greatly benefit your future political career. Oh, don't go. There are two or three things I'd like to ask you. All right, you two fellows cover the front and back. Come on, Corey. Sorry, but you'll have to get the rest of the information from Bartlett, since you insisted on calling the police. Not a sound out of you. Hold it, everyone. Now we're going to see who you really are, Mr. Green Hornet. Ram, the police! <laughs> So the Sentinel busts another racket. You mean the Green Hornet did? It's about time he was being given some of the credit. Oh, tell it the district attorney. The Sentinel busted this racket and it's going to bust others. Well, since the Sentinel started his campaign, people have written in by the hundreds telling of rackets and abuses. Look at those letters. Take this one, for instance. Why not look into the parking lot racket? Cars are damaged, even stolen. Gas is drained from tanks. Packages and equipment are taken. That's something for you to look into, Jenks. Oh, that's small-time stuff. The police can handle that. Well, the police would if they could. But the parking lot owners avoid responsibility of any kind by posting signs, legal or not. Oh, we're after bigger game. Most of the complaints concern one particular lot, the Meadow Park lot, especially in regards to cars disappearing. Perhaps I'll take a look at that one myself. I feel like I've been missing a lot of fun. <laughs> Don't get your nose punched, boss. Well, it hasn't been punched for some time. Might do it some good. Say, find Axford for me and tell me to bring around on my old car and his car, too. Okay? Why not let Jenks handle this? Oh, his heart isn't in it. Besides, I want to play some. I want to take Michael with me. Now, I know you'll be heading into trouble. Well, I hope you're right. Too bad about Bartlett. But at least he didn't get a chance to talk. It involved us. Have you heard anything from the chief about it? No, not yet, but I'm expecting to. There he is. Yes? Who's there? Monroe and Ogden. The Hornet is crippling our syndicate. I want the take in all lines stepped up. I'm offering $5,000 to the man who puts the Hornet out of business. Pass the word along. Five grand? The boys will sure get busy when they hear about that. How long will you be? A couple of hours.
All right, Corey, I got a hot one for you. The owner spotted him in his trailer. Here's a license number. All right, I'll pick up break at the corner and go after him. What's the idea? You flame spalpeen! I teach you to look where you're going. You think you will? Say, buddy, I'd like to see the driver that just drove that sedan in. No sedan come in here. Well, that's funny. I thought sure I saw one come in here. I'd have seen it if it had, wouldn't I? Yeah, I guess you would have. Is the boss in? No, he's out of town. He'll be back next week. Well, I don't suppose that you saw a sedan come in here either. You're supposing right, mister. <laughs> well, I guess there must have been a mistake. Thanks. Who is that guy? I've heard his voice before. You got me. His face is familiar, but I can't place him. Do you think he's a detective? So what? He didn't say anything, did he? Well, what happened to your friends? They run off. One of them yelled to the other that you was Britt Reed. And about that time, I tripped over the curb. Did you get their license number? By golly, I did not. Well, never mind. I did, but I don't think it'll do as much good. Come on, get in. Oh, did you find your car? No. What do we do? We'll report it the police is stolen. What do you usually do? Sure, my car went into that garage, Cato. I'm doubly sure since I recognized Pete there. You mean the mechanic who escaped from the airfield? Yes. They must have some quick way of hiding stolen cars, and I mean to find out what it is. You mean the Green Hornet will find out? Yes, Cato. The Green Hornet rides tonight. Who 
comes out here. Take your hand off that light switch and come over here. Green on it. Right. What do you want? Information. About what? Where do you hide your stolen cars? I don't know nothing about stolen cars. You're lying. Hold on. Green on it. I'm going to beat it. It's too tough for me. Cato, he's too valuable to escape. Green 
corner. I can't catch that thunderbolt. Catch it. That thing travels faster than the bullets I send after it. You all right, Mr. Brett? All right, Cato. What happened to Pete? There was no time to find out. The police came. Head for home. Meadows on the phone. I conked a hornet, but saw that crash coming and I had a jump. What makes you think he was killed? That car of his come roaring up and the goggles chauffeur jumped out and dragged him out of the wreck. As limp as a wet rag. Yes, Meadows speaking. Say, which one of your men was fool enough to steal Britt Reed's car? What's that? Well, it's on the front page of the Sentinel. Weren't you in enough trouble letting the Green Hornet find your place without stealing that car? I didn't know it was Reed's car. I'll get it out of here before it can be traced. And you needn't worry about the Hornet. He's dead. Dead? What do you mean? Good. Get Reed's car off your hands and we're set and pretty. Right. The job that Corey brought in yesterday belonged to Britt Reed. Yeah, I know, but... What's been done to it? Nothing. It's still in the shop. Hello. Hello. Meadows speaking. Yes, Mr. Meadows, this is Lou. Don't alter that black sedan that just came in. It's Pitt Reed's. She's so hot it smokes. Run it over to the junkyard tonight and have them break it up. Commissioner is here, Mr. Reed. Oh, send him in. Hello, Commissioner. What can I do for you? I just want to pin a medal on the Sentinel. Think your tip on the medals out of park will enable us to smash the accessory racket wide open. The accessory racket? Sure. These crooked auto parks strip cars of accessories and replace them with inferior articles. Then they dispose of their loot in their own stores. Well, don't you think there's a connection between this racket and the outfit that are stealing cars? Sure there is. The small fry we've caught either can't or won't give us a lead to the higher up. Maybe he's the Green Hornet himself. No. What do you know about the Green Hornet in this case? Well, nothing, but I don't think he's a criminal. He's had a hand in breaking up every one of these rackets. The district attorney thinks he's just clearing away competition. After all, he has a couple of murders to his credit. That's not been proved. He's helped the police in every instance. And as a reward, this paper puts a price on his head. All right, Miss Case. But when I catch your bandit boyfriend, I'm going to charge you with being an accessory. You can quote me as giving the Sentinel credit for smashing the accessory racket. Thanks, I'll do it. Goodbye. Goodbye. Reed, I got a line on some of the men that stole your car. All right, Michael, let's have it. I was checking the junkyards, like you told me, and at a place over on the east side, what do you think I saw? Well, come on, come on. This is no guessing game. It was one of the fellas that lifted your bus off the lot. 
Are you sure? Sure, I'm sure. Of course, he's not there now. He was just driving away when I spotted him. Well, let's go take a look at that junkyard. Sure. Hey, Dean. What did you find out? Everything's quiet at the junkyard. The police haven't connected it with the Meadows Auto Park. Good. Reed's leaving. What can I do for you? I'm looking for a motor that would do in a powerboat. Well, I guess I can fix you up. Jake! Yeah? These gents are looking for a motor. Show them what we've got. All right, right over here. So they didn't connect this yard with the parking lot, eh? Well, anyway, Reed's given us a chance for that job the Chief ordered. What are you guys doing here? Pipe down, Slim. Those two birds that just came in are newspaper men. The young fellow's Britt Reed, editor of the Sentinel. Well, there they are. Look them over. Maybe they'll find something there you can use. Thanks. Give me that list of numbers. Why pick my place for your dirty work? I don't like those kind of accidents. You'll have an accident you like less if you don't obey orders. Why, you... Suffering snakes. Wait a minute, Michael. Hey, Jake. Come in a minute. Yeah? This one ought to be all right if the cylinders aren't scored. This is a junkyard, not a showroom. You've got to take them as you find them. Can't you find what you want? No, they all seem to be in pretty bad shape. Well, take a look at this one. Practically new. I think we're spotted. Come down out of there, you murderer and blackguard! Blow away that gun. It was just an accident. Well, it sure picked a fine place to happen. Oh, I'm sorry, men. I don't know how that wreck got up there. Well, nobody was hurt, so forget it. We better tip Meadows at the junkyard is spotted. Oh, the whole works will be spotted if we don't stop Reed. Next time I'll use a gun. How many men you got working here? Just me and Jake. Well, I guess you haven't got anything here we can use.
Where's Meadows? In the office. What's wrong? Plenty. I tell you, Reed, that was no accident. It was attempted murder. You're right, Axford. So only you didn't get a bullet in your back when you lugged out that gun of yours. But ain't we going to get them? It's a job for the police. You and I are in the newspaper business. Brett Reed has spotted the junkyard. He was out there looking for his car. He wouldn't find anything. It's still here. But we tried to get him and missed. What do you mean, missed? We trailed Reed to the junkyard. No, my car wasn't there, Commissioner. But there's no doubt the yard is connected with the other rackets in some way. Get him to me that spotted the place. I'll send Axford along to identify the men in case you catch them. The bigger part was suspicious, but Reed just took it as an accident. It's no fault of yours the whole thing wasn't bungled. We can't send Reed's car out there now. Drop it in the river. We can't drive that far through the streets with every prowl car in town on the lookout for it. It's got to be destroyed. Put a time bomb in it. Axford has gone with the police, Mr. Britt. Well, we must get back before he returns. The Green Hornet will hunt Mr. Meadows? I'm convinced that, that garage is the headquarters for the car stealing racket. Meadows must face the Green Hornet tonight. Mm -hmm. What time is she set for? Exactly 11. Just gives me plenty of time to get the car to that vacant lot. Keep her here a little while. What for? Why not run her out now? We keep her on that vacant lot too long, the police may find her before 11 o'clock. Silence your motor. Wait here. Sorry, but you asked for it. Hold her here a little longer. I'll tell you when to go. All right, Mr. Meadows. Who turned off that light? I did. The Green Hornet! Lower your voice. I want some information concerning the car stealing racket. Car stealing? Yes. I happen to know you're a member of the crime syndicate in this town. That you're a director of the Crooked Accessory Stores. And you're the real owner of Slim's Junkyard. We even have a shop here in this building to alter stolen cars. I can give the police enough information to send you to the pen for 20 years. What do you want? The name of the big boss, back at this crime ring. I'll give you one minute to talk, Meadows. Six minutes till that bomb cracks off. That's cutting it pretty fine. Run her out now. Meadows says to wait. Not me, I'm taking her out. All right, time's up. I don't know his name. I can show you how you can reach him. Come this way. All right, but no tricks.
Meadows. Put him in Britt Reed's car. Meadows. We'll put him in Britt Reed's car. Came from that direction. Someone in this car. Say, this is Britt Reed's car that was reported stolen. That's right. A stolen car and a homicide. Say, we've stumbled onto something big. I wonder if there's a phone in this place. There must be one in that office over there. You call headquarters. Take care of things around here. Right.
a spook. I never saw a car move so fast. You all right, Mr. Britt? Fit as a fiddle, Cato. How about you? I do not think I'm going to join my ancestors just yet, Mr. Britt. Oh, you'll be all right. You've been called here to receive a message of special importance from the chief himself. We're ready to hear you, sir. As a result of the Green Hornet's operations, our stolen car organization is smashed. Fortunately for us, Meadows won't ever talk. The toll taken by the Green Hornet is mounting. His interference in our affairs has cost us hundreds of thousands. He must be removed without delay. As an incentive toward this end, I've authorized Monroe to pay $100,000 to the man who puts an end to the Green Hornet's career. That's all, gentlemen. Why wasn't Rockford at this meeting? He was busy moving the headquarters of the Blue Streak bus lines out to the old Martinson place. Oh, I see. Getting ready to give the Whippet line buses the works, huh? That's the reason he moved out there. It's near their repair garage. Now, the Whippet bus lines franchise is up for renewal at the end of the month. And if it shouldn't be renewed, the Blue Streak bus lines would have no competition, Dean. I get you, Rocky. Now, if you two could get jobs as mechanics in the Whippet garage... It's in the bag, boss. Something tells me that from now on, the Whippet service is going to be terrible. Mm-hmm. So long. See you later. Morning, Miss Case. Just a minute, Mr. Reed. Tell Mr. West that Mr. Reed will see him in a minute. Gunnigan is waiting downstairs with Mr. West. He wants to see you. Mr. West? President of Whippet Bus Lines. Oh, send him right up. And for 12 years, the Whippet Bus Lines have maintained an enviable record of service and safety. Well, perhaps your employees are coasting along on that record, Mr. West, and just getting careless. No, that's not it. I believe the Blue Streak Bus Lines want us to lose our franchise so they won't have any competition. Well, surely you can't blame them for access to your lines. The Blue Streak Company is an old established firm, too. Now, it may only be a coincidence, but the fact remains, our trouble dates from the time the Blue Streak Company changed management six months ago. What do you want me to do? I'd like to see the Sentinel do something about the matter. I'm sorry, Mr. West. The Sentinel has never interfered in squabbles between competitors. I'm sorry you feel that way about it, Mr. Reed. Excuse me. Uh, Reed, I've just made an important discovery. Don't tell me you saw perpetual motion. Yes, sir, and I... No, no. It's about the old Martinson place out in the Westwood Pike. Is it haunted? It's open again. And it's being used as headquarters by the Blue Streak bus lines. Well, so what? Well, now, it was used by crooks once. Maybe another set of crooks is using it again. Oh, you got a terrific imagination, Michael. Don't it look suspicious to you, sir? No, it does not. Britt, where suspects the Blue Street Company of sabotage? I think it'd be a pretty good idea to have Lowry get down and check up on the situation. All right, all right. Put Lowry on the story. And if it'll make you any happier, I'll take some bus rides myself. Fix it. When she gets rolling down grade. Hey. You're sure this bus is going to the terminal empty? The boss said there was to be no accidents to people. Don't worry, it'll be empty. I checked with the dispatcher. Okay, 16's ready to roll. And where are you going? Suburban terminal empty. New orders, bud. More trouble? 57's broken down near Clover Hill grade. You'll have to pick up his load. Right. Come on. You discovered what's wrong? 
Yeah, there's a couple of bearings shot. What's the matter? Whippet lines operating buses with old motors? No, this is a brand new job, but it's the third breakdown I've had with it. Oh, that's strange. Strange? Say, you know this oil feels like it has emery dust in it. You know... Say, here comes number 16 now to pick up my load. You got orders to pick up my load? Yeah, get him in here. Okay. Well, sorry we delayed you. This bus will take you there. Uh, step inside, please. Yeah, just take this bus. Yeah, go right inside. down the grade. Don't tell the passengers, Mr. Reed, but my brakes are gone. What can you do? I can handle the grade, but I'm worried about the bridge at the bottom. The one that's being repaired? Yeah, there's a bad dip in the detour, and at this speed, we're allowed to tip over. There's the bridge. can do is try. You'll never make that detour. There's no other route. Yes, there is. First, feel your brakes start to go. Well, I started to slow down on the downgrade. How long has it been since they've been inspected? This bus just came out of the shop less than an hour ago. Well, let's take a look at the brake rods. Well, this rod has been almost cut in two by a hacksaw. The failure of your brakes was not accidental. That's right, there's no mistake about that. How do you like that? Well, I don't get it. Every time a Whippet bus breaks down, there's always a blue streak on a job to take over our passengers. Mr. Reed just came in, Mr. West. I'm sorry you had to wait. That's quite all right, Miss Case. I guess he was delayed getting into town. Thank you. Hello, West. Hello, Reed. The last time we talked, you hinted that the blue streak people were trying to cripple the Whippet lines. I'm convinced of it. Well, have you any proof? No, I haven't. All I know is our buses have experienced a large number of breakdowns lately, which look like sabotage. But you have no tangible evidence. And that's what worries me. This is a case that even the police can't touch. I see. What do you figure these breakdowns have cost you? I can't estimate what it's cost our reputation. But I should say our repairs have run about $12,000 over normal. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you very much. I think the Sunday will look into the bus transportation business thoroughly. Good. Miss Case, will you tell Axford I'm ready to go home? He went out just about the time you came in. Where'd he go? I don't know. He just said he had a hunch and he was going to follow it. Well, two to one to lead him into trouble. What goes on? This bird was trying to get in the window downstairs, Rocky. Burglar, huh? Nah, he's Mike Axford, a reporter for the Sentinel. Oh, a reporter, huh? Well, in that case, take off his gag, boys. You didn't have to break in here, Mr. Axford. We're always willing to talk to the press. What was it you wanted to find out? I wanted to see with my own eyes what kind of deviltry was being cooked up in this crooked house. Deviltry? Well, I don't know what you mean. Oh, yes, you do. 
Me and the Sentinels got enough on you to send you to the pen for life. Oh, you have? That's different. Here, time up. Is anybody else with him? Wouldn't you like to know? Yes, I would, and I'm going to find out. Let's go downstairs and take a look around. Time up good. That'll hold him. Take care of this snooper a little later. I don't know where to start with this blue streak outfit, Kato. It's definitely a case for the Hornet, but where can I get evidence? Why not call the officers of the blue streak line, Mr. Britt? If no one is there, you might pay them a visit. That's a good idea. This is Michael Axford. Who? Michael Axford. I'm at the Martinson place. They've got me tied up. A prisoner. I... Hello. Hello. Hi there. Who's calling? Uh, is this Westlake 4915? No, this is Westwood 4915. I'm sorry. I guess I have the wrong number. They're holding Axford at the old Martinson place. That is not good, but it gives the Hornet an objective. Get my mask and gun. We've got to move fast. So you thought you'd pull a fast one. What is you saying on that phone? Nothing but hello. You heard me. I don't know whether that was a phony call or not. We'd better not take any chances. Better get rid of this mug. We'll get out on the garage and speed Joe up. He's fixing a tire. Make it snappy. I'll see if I can start this bird to singing. Are you going to talk or not? The last time you're gonna tell me what Reed sent you up here to find out? I'm telling you nothing, Rockford. Get away from that man. I said get away from him. You... You're the Green Hornet. Exactly. Why have you got this man tied up? Why? Uh, who, me? Never mind. I'll release you and then you beat it. You two and get up from there. There's a happy day this night is. I've got you, and at last I've got the Green Hornet what I want him. Give me that gun, you idiot. I don't hold your breath on it until I give it to you, or maybe it would be just as well if you did. Shall I tie him up? No. Get over there, you two, or I can watch you. I'll have no conniving between you. Come on, move. I suppose you're going to call the police. That's just what I'm going to do. Hello. Hello. What? Drop that receiver. Now get out of here. Yes, sir. And now I'll deal with you and your racketeering bus line. I'm running a legitimate business. You're the one that's a racketeer. I know all about the sabotage you've had done on the Whippet buses. You're crazy. The Blue Streak is an old established company. Don't lie to me. I know your men cut the brake rods on a Whippet bus today and nearly cost the lives of half a dozen people. That was an empty bus that... Uh-huh. It was supposed to be empty, but it wasn't. Rockford, your methods are old-fashioned. I'll show you a much better way to really put a bus line out of business. I get it. You want to cut in with us. What do you think? All right, what's your price? $12,000 on the line and a signed agreement for 25% of your take. 
Okay, it's a deal. I'll write you out a check while you draw up the agreement. No check, Rockford. Cash. But I haven't got that much money here. If we're going to be partners, let's not start out by lying. I happen to know you keep plenty of cash here. Now you want the agreement to read, and I'll write it out and sign it for you. I'm telling you, Tim, the Green Hornet's there. At the old Martinson place on the Westwood Pike. No, you better send three squads. Right. There's your agreement, Hornet. Now let's have a few of your ideas. Thanks, Rockford. That's just the evidence I needed to smash your racket. Now I'm turning you over to the police. Why, you crook, you said you was going to show me how to put a bus line out of business. I am, and it's your bus line. This $12,000 will just pay the repair bills on the Whippet buses. And now I want to know who's the head of all your rackets. Come on. Don't use those guns, you'll hit Rockford. And I'll get you both before you can fire again. No, no, don't shoot. The chief's orders are to get the Hornet regardless. Too bad, Rocky. Wait, wait. Circle around him. He can't cover all three of us. <laughs> Down the floor, Rocky. Can't cover all three of us. Down the floor, Rocky. Night's work, Kato. When the district attorney receives this evidence in his morning mail, it'll be the end of Mr. Rockford's bus racket. Green Hornet breaks another racket. Rockford indicted. What's Yes? Mr. Roberts is calling. Put him right on. 
Hello, Charles. How are you? I'm fine. Uh, listen, Britt, I have to see you right away. Well, it sounds like you've really got something. <laughs> I have, and it's big. So big that I'm going to the district attorney right after I... Hello. Hello. Charles? Hello. Operator, I've been cut off. There's no one on the line now, sir. Thank you. Going down to Charles Roberts' office. Yes, sir. Is Mr. Roberts in? Well, hello, Johnny. What are you doing here? Hello, Mr. Reed. Oh, I just got out of school. Charlie's teaching me the trucking business. Won't be long before it's Roberts Brothers Incorporated. Oh, that's swell, John. Is Charles in? Sure. I'll give him a bite. I guess it's out of order. Is there anybody with him? No, I'll take you right in. It's funny, it's locked. Charlie! Hey, Charlie! Have you got a key? Yeah, I've got one. Charlie, Mr. Reed is here. Hey, Britt, what's the matter There's with him? He's got his hand. Charlie! Dead, Britt. Don't. Don't you. But Britt, he's dead. Oh, you mustn't touch anything. He's been shot. You've got to call the police. Just a plain case of suicide, Reed. I can't believe it. Roberts had just been talking to me on the telephone. He didn't sound like a man that was going to commit suicide. John, did anybody come to see Charles between the time he called me at 9.30 and the time I arrived here? There you are, Reed. But I tell you, there was someone in here. That cigarette was burning when we first discovered the body. And Charles Roberts never smoked cigarettes. Look, Reed. The man was found shot. The gun was in his hand. The wound could be self-inflicted. The outer door is bolted from the inside. Add it all up, it equals suicide. Unless you can get some further evidence. The case will have to go as reported. I'll get that evidence. John. Are you sure you can think of nothing that would have made Charles do a thing? No, no, I, I can't, Mr. Reed. And you didn't leave your office at any time? No, I didn't. Well, then why didn't you hear the shot? Well, I was probably in a stock room. Then you did leave your office. Yeah, but I was only gone for a few minutes. Well, it'd been long enough. Tell me, do you know what Charles was going to talk to me about over the phone? No, I don't. He was looking at some insurance reports which seemed to upset him, and. And he told me to take a bill of lading out to the stockroom. Do you know what was in those reports? Oh, about truck breakdowns, delaying shipments, causing insurance rates to be increased, costing us a lot of customers. Sabotage? Well, the insurance investigators thought so. Where are those papers? I'd like to see them. Why, they're on the desk. Where there? That's funny, they're gone. That's enough for me. Charles was murdered, and the man that did it took those papers.
would you like a good job? I've got a good job. Listen, why don't you Tri-State guys stay out of here? We don't want any part of that outfit. You guys are haywire. Tri-State pays better. Well, Acme pays us okay. We're not interested. Hey, speak for yourself, Bill. I think I would be interested. Say, you're gonna run out on the company, huh? Why, you... <laughs> I want you to get me all the information you can concerning the recent accidents to the Acme Transportation Company. <laughs> you mean the Jinx Transportation Company, don't you? Why do you say that? On account of all the accidents that's been happening to their trucks. Don't you read your own paper? Check with all the Acme competitors. I want to know who's getting their canceled contracts. Yes, sir. And, Jinx, I want you to go down to our morgue and get all the dope you can on the accidents to Acme trucks. Right. Oh, boy, I smell a story. Wet stream, wet stream, pen on paper, read about that truck probe, big truck probe coming. Chief wanted you here at 10 o'clock. Says your department is falling down on the job. Let's see what he has to say. We're ready, sir. Sligby, I want contracts. Let this small fry alone. Get after the big ones. Tim Bryan is the biggest shipper in the valley. I want him signed. Get him. I don't care how you do it. Mr. Bryan, Tri-State would like to handle your transportation. We can save you a lot of money. Acme has been handling our stuff for a good many years, Mr. Dean. Yes, I know. We not only can beat their prices, but guarantee delivery and on time. Acme does that? And I'm willing to pay their charges. If I left them now, they'd close down completely. If you don't, you might close down. That sounds like a threat, Mr. Dean. <laughs> no, not at all. Only Acme has been having a lot of mishaps lately. Delays are costly. And in the case of perishables, ruinous. You have my decision. Very well, Mr. Bryant. See you again. Good day. Acme's biggest shipper, according to your report, is Brian. He's got a lot of perishables going to Kentville today. Where did we go to contact him? Why, Britt, at the Acme Yards, of course. Well, if what I suspect is true, the yards are being watched, and I don't want to be seen. Oh, well, uh, there's the market coffee shop. All the trucks going in and out of town stop there. All right, the market coffee shop it is. And we better take one of our delivery trucks. I want to attract as little attention as possible. I got you. All right, give us anything that's cold, sister. outfit. That ain't funny, wise guy. How'd you get this far without breaking down? It's 12 blocks from the depot. That truck's as good as any Tri-State has, and it ain't gonna break down. I checked it all myself, every inch. So long, sir. Why don't you look where you're going? What's the hurry, buddy? You're not going any place with that Acme truck. Uh. But he doesn't make the bottom of the hill. Shut up. Let's get out of here. And listen, put a muffler on that big mouth of yours.
didn't sound like kidding to me. We better get out and take a look at that truck. That was a swell job of driving, buddy. What happened? Felt like I lost my brake fluid. That couldn't have been done deliberately, could it? Sure, in two minutes. Say, that tri-state crook told me I wouldn't get very far. Well, this is goodbye Acme Transportation Company. What do you mean? If I don't get this load in on time, we lose the Bryan contract. You won't lose the Bryan contract. Get a tow rope and we'll pull you in. Okay, buddy, let's go. Good evening, Mr. Britt. Hello, Cato. Get the gun, mask, and car ready. We're going out tonight. Where to? To the Tri-State Truck Depot. <laughs> crossing it tonight with a truckload of Brian's perishables. Using the old road to fool us, huh? Yeah. Corey, get the boys and put that bridge out of commission. Dean, take Andy and fix that carload of fruit that Brian has at the railroad yards. Yeah, that'll show him the deal with Acme is expensive. See you at the bridge, Corey. How come? Thought you were laying low since you bumped Roberts. Lay off that Roberts business. There's no evidence against me. <laughs> Not if you destroy those insurance papers you took off Roberts' desk. Don't worry about that. I've got those locked in the safe. Get started, you fellas. Move, Slickby. The Green Hornet. What do you want? The insurance report you took from Charles Roberts the night you murdered him. Uh, I didn't kill Roberts. I know you did, and I want those reports. I'll get them. <laughs> Tie him up, Cato. Headquarters, Captain Ridge, send a squad car to the Tri-State Trucking Office. You'll find Robert's murderer there. Where will we go now? Down to the freight yard to get Sligby's partners.
Open that car door while I get this fruit destroyer ready. This is far enough, Cato. Throw off your lights and silence the motor. away from that gun. I want to ask you a few questions. Where's your partner? Right behind you. Give me your gun. This is the last one this side. Let's get out of here. 
the man I was fighting with is. I saw some men on the other side, signaling to stop the truck before it went onto the bridge. They were the men Slickby sent to wreck the bridge. Where's the car? This way. foot with the seal of the Green Hornet in his hand. Documents found in Sleepy's pockets are believed to be sufficient evidence to convict him of the murder. You don't have to read it to me, Casey. I wrote it. And boy, was it a scoop. If you wrote it, why do you keep calling the Hornet a crook? Why not find out what the man is after instead of classing him with hoodlums and racketeers? That's the stuff, Miss Case. What do you suggest we'd better do? Find out who the Green Hornet is. Find out who the Green Hornet is. We had a dozen paying rackets and the police couldn't touch us. And now the Hornet steps in. Then he not only breaks the rackets, but gets the men that runs them. Mark Hine and Grant dead. Morrison and Rockford in jail. And now they got a murder charge against Sligby with enough evidence to hang him. Sligby won't squeal on the syndicate. But unless you men track down the Hornet, there won't be any syndicate. Dean and I have tracked him down more than once. We've been lucky to live to tell about it. Look, Monroe, every time the Hornet strikes, the Sentinel has the information first. Think there's any connection? And the Sentinel offering a thousand dollars reward for the Hornet, dead or alive? Don't be a fool. Look, Reed, I got something. Well, it must be a date, the way you're dialed up. Dialed up, is it? Sure, that's what I want to talk to you about. A dollar and a quarter it cost me to have this suit pressed. Six months ago, the price was 75 cents. The price of labor has gone up. You mean the price of protection's gone up? Look at this. I found that in my coat pocket when I brought the suit home. This, it's unsigned. Ah, yes, but I could interview this guy, Levinson. Well, even if it were true, he wouldn't dare talk. But I'll keep it on file in case something turns out. That's right, laddie. We'd better find it, sure. Done, Mr. Britt. Thanks, Cato. Perhaps the Green Hornet can persuade Mr. Levinson to tell some things he wouldn't dare tell the police. What's on your so-called mind? Sure, I'm giving you a chance for a front-page picture. A man named Levinson. Is he important? After I've interviewed him, he'd be the most important man in town. That's you, Levinson. Well, listen. Your protection money hasn't been paid this month. But I haven't got the money. Business is bad. My customers are all kicking at the raisin prices. Be ready for a quick getaway. excuses. You remember what happened to the others that didn't pay. Give me another day. I'll raise the money, Lynch. Uh, somehow. Give me that phone. Hello. Hello. Who was on that phone? Well, who are you? Uh, Green Hornet. 
Yes. Who are you talking to? No, uh, someone had the wrong number. Don't lie, Levinson. I know you and others are paying for protection. This is the place. Wait here till I see where the fella talk at all. You'll probably scare him off before I get a lens on him. I want to know who collects that money in the name of the man who sends him. And why should I tell you? You would hijack him, and I'd have to pay twice. Then you admit you're paying. I, I admit nothing. I... Open that door. Go on, open that door. Good evening, Mr. Robinson. I'm Michael Axford, representing the Daily Sentinel. I'm here for a little interview. Now then. A buck and a quarter you charged me for pressing the last suit, I said. I have nothing to say to reporters. Oh, come on now, Mr. Lavinson. Sure the Sentinel wants to help you. And you know, there's nobody here but the two of us. By the ghost of St. Patrick, the Green Hornet. So it was you that was collecting the blood money for the rackets, you murdering pirate. Here we are. Now I want that information. Come on, get it. himself in there. Did you see him? Did I see him? I'll tell the world I did. I took his picture. His picture? Well, which way? He... Let me see that picture of the Hornet. Clicker scooped the town. That's great. Gunny can see the Clicker gets a bonus. Break up the front page to find room for that picture. I sure will. This will jump circulation plenty. And my story of the Hornet and his gang. Gang? I thought the Hornet always worked alone. Alone? Is that sure? If he'd been alone, I'd have had him. But he had three lobby gals with him as big as gorillas and twice as ugly. And Gunnigan put a rewrite man on Axford's story. <laughs> oh, dear. This photograph of the Hornet gives us a chance to pile the whole thing right in his lap. All righty, Chief. The men are waiting for your orders necessary to take care of Levinson at once before police force him to talk. Andy and Pete will attend to this. Dean will convey these instructions to Lynch. If he's interviewed, he's to admit the existence of a protective association and intimate that the Hornet is behind it. If you act at once, we can clear ourselves and start a manhunt for the Hornet from which he can't escape. That's all. You all understand what you're to do? Leave Levinson to us. Dean, you know what you're to tell Lynch. Department? Well, this is Jay Levinson. It's the calling card of the Green Hornet. There's no doubt now who committed this murder. Well, it certainly looks conclusive. I still don't believe it. Since when has the Hornet been working by daylight? I'll ask him that when he's brought in. We're going to get him if I have to make a house-to-house -house search. Did you interview the cleaners and dyers on the list I gave you? Well, most of them, but they all deny any knowledge of a protection racket. I've left Lynch's place until the last. Lynch, huh? Yeah. I'll have a little talk with Mr. Lynch myself.
I want to see you a minute. All right. I'm coming. What are you doing back here? The Sentinel's got men out interviewing all the cleaning plants in town. They haven't been here. Well, they will be. The boss wants to be sure that you have your orders straight. Yeah, I got them all right. And I don't like them. It'll leave me wide open to an attack from the Hornet. Oh, you're safe enough. With the dragnet out for the Hornet, he won't dare come out of cover. the Sentinel. We're out to smash a protection racket. We need your cooperation. I was going to see you, Mr. Reed. I've been afraid to call the police in ever since what happened to Levinson. And there is a protection racket. Who collects your money? My name won't be mentioned. No, only the names of the guilty will be published. The Green Hornet makes the collections. <laughs> Are you sure of that? I've met him face to face. Well, that's fine, Mr. Lynch. I hope you don't meet him again. Lynch didn't like his orders. Won't destroy his plan. Well, maybe that can be arranged. How about Lynch? I don't think we'll need Lynch anymore. Suits me. Phone Lynch? Yes, Mr. Britt, as you ordered. I informed him anonymously that the police would raid his place tonight. Did he believe you? He seemed frightened. I believe he is on his way to destroy his papers. We'd better be going. Gasoline is in the back. Faster, Cato, faster. to cross the chief, huh? Hmm? He's not gonna cross anybody. He is sap. Place is full of gasoline fumes. You want to blow it up? Come on. What do you want? Who are you? The Green Hornet. Yes, Lynch. An old acquaintance, according to the papers. They made me blame it on you. They? Who are they? Who do you take orders from? Do I go free if I talk? I'm not here to bargain. I want the names of those racketeers. I've got a list here. No, you don't.
fire? I don't know. We gotta make sure. Chief wants his mouth shut. It'll be a pleasure. Quick, Cato, they've spotted us. the way that car disappears. Hey, I have an idea how we can get a line on that guy, Lynch. Yeah, what is it? He's got an interest in his brother's business. If he escapes, he's just dumb enough to go to his brother's place to hide out. Losing Lynch like that? Yes, Mr. Britt. We've got to find him again if we hope to end this cleaning and dying racket. Well, let's get some sleep. Mr. Reed's apartment. No, this is Michael Axford, his bodyguard. Uh, yes, Mr. Reed's here, but he can't be disturbed. But I've got to talk to him. It's a matter of life or death. Now, look, I can't understand you. Will you calm down? Tell him it's about the Green Hornet. The Green Hornet? Well, why didn't you say so? Reed! Reed, wake up, will you? Reed! What is it, Michael? It, 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 you're wanted on the phone. It's, it's the Green Hornet. <laughs> the Green Hornet? I, I mean, it's about the Green Hornet. It's life or death, he says. Fred Reed speaking. Who are you? Lynch. What Lynch? Oh, I see. Well, what do you want? I just got a tip that my associates are going to kill me. I don't dare go to the police. And the Green Hornet is after me, too. What do you expect me to do about it? Well, you've got influence, Mr. Reed. Yeah, I'll tell all I know about the cleaning and dyeing rackets. And it's plenty. But I want to guarantee your protection. Well, I can't promise you anything, but I feel the district attorney would be interested. Where are you now? At my brother's office, 219 4th Street. And I'm alone. Get over here at once. And my associates are hot on my trail. I'll be right down. Michael, we've got to move fast. Where's your car? It's in front. I was going to put it away, but I dozed off. Cato, my hat and coat.
send it to 219 4th Street. Tell them there may be a murder. Tip Lynch, he was on the spot. Step on it, Michael. We've got to get to him before his gang does. Calling car 37. Calling car 37. Go to 219 4th Street. 219 4th Street. And investigate the trouble. Be careful. It may be a shooting. That is all. Car 42, car 42, go to 37 district. Locked. Cover the back door. Killing. The men who did it went that way in a black sedan. Okay, Mr. Reed, we'll go after it. I'll report to headquarters for you. Come on, Michael. Call police headquarters. Yes, sir. This is Michael Axford. There's been a murder at... Uh, at where is this place? 219 4th Street. 219 4th Street. Send the homicide squad, the coroner, fingerprint men, photographers... Uh, no, I don't want the mayor and the governor too. I know what I'm about. It was me who was falling in cars while you were still balling in your crate. Police car, Trenton. Stop! We'll smash into something. Hey. What do you make of that? Oh, sure. 
Taylor Lynch was drawing pictures while he was talking to you on the phone. Men don't do that when they're excited. That's a picture of a wastebasket. Now, why would he be drawing that? To call our attention to it. It's a letter. Lynch hid it in the wastebasket so the men that were after him wouldn't find it. Well, read it. Mr. Reed, they're closing in on me. But if they get me, I'll have my revenge by this letter. The Green Hornet has nothing to do with the protection racket. My associates in the syndicate made me lie about that. They also killed Lavinson. Now they are after me. I hope you will avenge my death by trapping them. The big boss of all the rackets is a man named... Well, go on. What's his name? Unfortunately, that's all the time Lynch had to write. But it confirms my belief that there is a head to this crime ring. We've got to find him and wipe him out. Whoopsie! Green Hornet escapes again! Whoopsie! Green Hornet still alive! I've just been talking to the chief. He's pretty sore about what happened last night. You had both the Green Hornet and Britt Reed on the spot and you let them go. I'm not so sure the Green Hornet wasn't burned up in that fire. That's just it. You're not sure. Lynch got out. Why couldn't the Green Hornet, too? And later you had Reed dead to rights. And if you hadn't been so anxious about your own necks, we'd have been free of those damaging editorials of his. Reed seems to be a pushover for a call for help. Maybe we can get him dead to rights again. All right, see if you can arrange something. I'll do that. Lynch's letter proves conclusively, Mr. Commissioner, that the rackets are under one hand. The thing to do is to find him. The police department is doing everything it can. We follow every lead, but they all fade out. The organization is too well protected. Well, the Green Hornet's doing his best to knock him over so he can be the big boss himself. Uh, by the way, have you increased the reward for him? Not officially. But I'll personally double it to anybody who can get the Green Hornet dead or alive. <laughs> Put it aside for me. Sure I'm getting closer to Mr. Hornet every minute. Seriously now, I'd like all this cleared up before the elections. Otherwise, conditions would be bad for an honest vote. Oh, I've got to see the boss. What's the rush, Jenks? I've got the Hornet. Where? In your pocket? Oh, no kidding, Casey. This is a real McCoy. Mr. Reed is busy. Mm -hmm. You can count on the Sentinel in every way. I'm sure of that, Reed. Thanks. Goodbye. Goodbye. Boss, I tracked the Hornet to his lair. I know where that big black car of his goes every night. How did you learn all this? In this anonymous letter that came this morning. If you want the Hornet, you can trap him at his hideout. It is a two-story house four miles from the city to miss on State Highway Number 7. Don't tell the police or there may be a tip-off. Say, I know that place. It's the old Martinson house. It always was a crook hangout. So it is. Let's get out there, Reed. And find nothing? Well, then you're not going? Yes, Michael, I am. Tonight. I'll go with Jenks and Axford. You wait behind the Mortensen house with Black Beauty and the Hornets disguise. But why do you take this risk, Mr. Britt? Because I feel that that letter was a trap meant for me as Britt Reed. We'll let the Hornets spring it out and see if we can't catch somebody. Understand? No, sir. But if you say it is all right, it must be. You take the lower road. You'll be there long before we are. I'll take the back. Let's rush him. No, there's no need of anybody getting hurt. And besides, I want to catch whoever's in there alive. Okay, you scare him out and we'll grab him. Well, now give me a couple of minutes to get set. Now, Reed, go easy, boy, will you? I'd never forgive myself if anything happened to you, and me not with you. Okay, we'll take them off. Where do they come in, then let them have it. I'll try to guess whoever's in there, and then rejoin Jenks and Axford when they found them. Be careful, Mr. Britt. I will. You wait for me at that corner of the house. I may have to get out of this disguise in a hurry. Yes, sir.
long enough. Come on. Hold it. Drop those guns. The green horn. Right. What's the idea of using my place as a hideout for your dirty work? You hornet, you better give up and come out. Dead or alive, they said, it makes no difference to me. All right, Mr. Hornet. You better give up and come out. Dead or alive, they said, it makes no difference to me. All right, Mr. Harnett. To you? What is the hornet? Oh, don't tell me I've killed you. The green hornet? I had him trapped. I tried to overpower him. He escaped through that window. But how in, in the world did he ever get through there? And there he 
goes, sure he must be the devil himself. You sure none of them bullets hit you, Reed? No. I'm all right. That's twice the green heart has slipped through my fingers. You're as slippery as an eel, Michael. You got away from me, too. I nearly with you by the looks of you. Well, I guess there's nothing left to do, but we'll be on our way. So you got the Green Hornet, eh? Nice going, Jinx. Yeah, you seem kind of glad he got away. Well, maybe I am. And if you ask me, I think he's giving the crooks a run for their money. Yeah, well, wait until after the election and watch the Canby administration give the Green Hornet a run for his money. You talk as if John Canby were already elected. It's in the bag, Casey, because that boy has promised to really clean up the town. Oh, Casey. Reed's in his office, isn't he? He's with Judge Stanton. Head of the Non-Partisan Voters League. Suffering mackerel, and <laughs> many fish. Even at this late hour, if the Sentinel will come out in favor of Hargrave, he'd be elected mayor tomorrow. Well, why should the Sentinel take a stand against Canby, his opponent? He has a clean record. I have reason to believe that every crook in town is backing Canby. Have you any definite proof of that? No. Well, I'm sorry, Judge. Unless you can bring forward definite proof, the Sentinel will have to maintain its neutral stand. You're making a mistake, Reed. I don't think so. Ogden, these figures gathered from Canby's precinct captains indicate his election. And it's in the bag? We've got to make sure. Sit down. And these wards here, we've got to muster more sure votes for Canby. Oh, that'll be a cinch. The boys have made enough false registrations to elect an alley cat mayor. Well, if we can make Canby mayor, our syndicate will clean up millions. Yeah. It'll be easier to get rid of Britt Reed than the Green Hornet. Good morning, Mr. Reed. Good morning. The boat's coming in heavy. That's fine. I'm always glad to see people taking an interest in civic affairs. Make an expert. That's Britt Reed of the Sentinel. He's done more for this town than any man I know of. That's a true word for you. He's done just that. Names, gentlemen. Scanlon is the name. George Scanlon. Here, you can't do that. Oh, no. an attempted murder. That car going away there. Michael, you call an ambulance and then stay here. I'm going after those crooks. I... Evidence of intimidation and corruption in all precincts. Four men have been killed and a dozen others sent to hospitals. That's all, Miss Case. Transcribe it and get a rewrite man on it. Yes, sir. I want an extra on the street as quickly as possible. Judge Stanton was right. The criminal element of this city is lined up solidly behind Canby. No casualties among the Candy people, eh? Not one. That's not all. The Canby crowd are voting ghosts. Are you sure of that? Dead sure. The registration lists have names of people that have been dead for years. I want an extra on the streets quickly. On the way. Axford, get my car on in front, on the double. Yes, sir. Pick up a camera and meet me downstairs in five minutes. Okay. Hey, that car looks familiar. Thought so. Those birds are repeaters. That's the third polling place I've seen them go in today.
Now let's go. Here comes that same car. Look, man of action, don't point. This is good manners, and you're liable to get our blocks knocked off. Do you think that car contains the same men we saw voting at the last polling place? Absolutely. Oh, you're wrong, Jenks. That's the same car, but they're not the same men. They're not repeaters. Keep your shirt on, boss. Get to the car and be ready for a quick getaway. Get a match. twice the same place by disguising themselves with masks. Well, what are we running away from? We've got to save these pictures. They're valuable evidence. Pull over with that car. I want you to make. You're the district attorney, and there's plenty of evidence to prove wholesale fraud in this election. What do you want me to do? Subpoena the ballots and put them in a safe place. Why? So we can fingerprint them and prove illegal handling. That's a great idea, but it'll take two days to obtain possession of those ballots through a court order. Well, that won't do. The minute the gang and back of Canby find out they're going to be subpoenaed, they'll destroy them. I'm afraid that's the best I can do. All right. Rexy, Rexy, those ballots have got to be destroyed tonight. Where are they now? Stored in the tri-state warehouse. The warehouse might burn down. No, the fire might be put out before the ballots were destroyed. You better have the boys hijack them out of the warehouse and burn them on the road somewhere. Okay, Dean will know how to handle it. Get the Hornets disguised, Kato. Yes, sir. Hello. Hello, Banks Incorporated? Yes, sir. This is the Daily Sentinel speaking. We've had some heavy collections come in since the banks have closed. You want an armored car? Yes, that's right. An armored car at the loading platform as soon as possible. Yes, thanks. Go ahead. What you do now, Mr. Britt? I'm afraid, Cato, the Green Hornet is going to have to do what the law has been unable to do. Prevent those ballots from falling into the hands of crooks. Well, 
What do you fellas want? Somebody here phoned for a bank card. Nobody told me nothing about it. Come inside, we'll find out. Sorry, old man, but you'll be all right in a few minutes. Sure you got them all? Yeah. I checked them off this copy of the warehouse receipts. I snitched from the election commissioner's office. Okay, Pete. Phone the chief, we're loaded. Hold it. The Green Hornet. And what do you want? you to do exactly as you're told. There's an armored car coming here. I want you to unload the cases from that truck and put them in the armored car. <laughs> we are not. All right, you ask for it. No, no. Don't shoot. We'll do what you say. Yeah, that's the last one. Keep them covered. I'll take a look. Nice work. We'll be back for them later. I'll take the Westwood Pike to Valley Spring Road. And then use the cutoff. You follow me. Hello. This is Pete. The Hornet down Dean and Corey with that devil gun. He's on his way with the ballots. You poor saps. Three against one. You let that racketeer outsmart you. I'm telling you, it can still stop him. What? Going by the way of the Westwood Pike to Valley Spring Road. Andy's up at the Morthison place. Phone him and have him get busy. Oh, but this'll stop the armored car, Andy.
Get on it now. The armored car. Come on. takes care of the hornet. Now to get those ballots out of that wreck and destroy them. Stay out of here, quick! You hurt badly? No. Those armored cars are built for protection. The police. Good. They'll take the ballots in the armored car and keep them until the court order to impound them comes through. Closing in on us, Ogden. Every move we make is blocked by the Green Hornet. Better get in touch with Max Gregory and tell him to take it easy. If the Hornet discovers he's sending munitions out of the country, we'll have the G-men on us, as well as the police and the Hornet. Better get Max on the phone. Yes? Max Gregory speaking. All right, put him on. Gregory, you better get that last shipment of munitions off your hands at once. Young Roberts is making things difficult. I was about to go and see him. Perhaps you could suggest some way of putting on pressure. I'll take care of it. He's got a warehouse at 39th and Grove, hasn't he? With the new mayor in office, we got the hoodlums on the run. Maybe now he can take a little time off and run down the Green Hornet. <laughs> well, that's a pretty large order, isn't it, Michael? What do you want me to do, give you six months vacation with pay or something? Six months, is it? Give me six days and I'd run the spalpine to earth. <laughs> Brother was killed by the racketeers? Yeah. Well, do you think the same gang maybe started this fire? Very likely. You go in there and find out all you can about who did start that fire. I'm going to John's office. Yes? This is John Roberts. You say you've got the fire under control? You don't know how it started. All right, I'll have the insurance people come down. Thanks. Britt Reed, gosh, am I glad to see you. Hello, John. I overheard your phone conversation. So that fire did cause you considerable damage. Yes, of course, my insurance will cover the actual loss. But I'll lose a lot of important customers and, well... Spell it. That fire wasn't accidental. Someone's trying to drive me in the line, same as they did Charles. What's the racket? Well, it's this way. I've kept this business right up to the standard that Charles set. As you know, we do a lot of shipping by rails in carload lots. Well, the other day a fellow came in and demanded that I allow him to ship under my bill of lading. Wanted to come and dear my space. What do you mean? Well, if I was sending two cars, he'd take over one. Wouldn't tell me who he was or what he was shipping, but he made it clear that I'd have trouble if I refused. Hmm. So that fire was the result of your refusal? I'm sure of it. Well, there's been a series of smaller attacks. 
breakdown of trucks, attacks on my drivers. Have you notified the police? No. You remember what happened to Charles when he went to the police. Very well done, Dean. This fire will bring young Mr. Roberts to terms. I have one more little surprise for him, down at the harbor. Nothing of talk, Turkey. Very good. I'll talk again to Roberts tomorrow. Better not. He knows you now and might spring something. Let me handle it. All right. All right, John, you talk to him out here. And put Jenks in the other room so he can hear what he has to say. I sure appreciate this, Fred. Well, we've got to rid this city of those crooks. See you later. So long, Fred. He's on his way up now. Better get inside. What can I do for you? You're Roberts, huh? That's right. What do you want? Listen, buddy. You can save yourself a lot of trouble. We made you a proposition which you refused, but in view of what happened since, maybe you've changed your mind. You mean that you and your crowd are responsible for that warehouse fire? Never mind that. I'm giving you one last chance to come in with us unconditionally. Yes, but I've got to know what your name is and what you propose to ship. You want to know too much. Look out for trouble. I think he suspected something. Okay, thanks. Sentinel reporter following me. Get him. Follow him, Cato. Hey. Hey, what is this, a stick-up? That's another scoop for the Sentinel. Maybe not. I caught the license number. Nice driving, Pete. You ditched him. Where to now? Max Gregory's off. Take him up by the freight elevator in the rear. And final negotiations with Roberts are now on their way. If all goes well, shipment of arms will go forward at once. That's all. Put it in code and get it off immediately. The private door, sir. That'll be Dean with the report on Roberts. Let him in. What is this? What have you got here? Sentinel no man. Roberts had him planted to trail me. What did you bring him up here for? Well, no chance to get rid of him. and He knows too much to turn him loose. That means we've got to strike at that shipment of his tonight. Throw him in that closet. I'll have him taken care of later. At Clearwater Junction, you board the train. You'll get your final instructions from Monroe. Thanks for your cooperation. The traffic bureau gave you the name of the owner of the car that carried off Mr. Jenks? 
Yes, it's registered to a Max Gregory. Here it is. 311 Gardner Building. Mr. Gregory's going to be asked some questions tonight by the Green Hornet. has again balked. The train carrying Robert's shipment will be boarded at Clearwater Junction at midnight tonight. Robert's cars and everything behind them will be uncoupled on the long grade west of Summit. That's all. Put it into code. Never mind the code. I'll take it as it is. The Green Hornet. Give it to me. Glad to see you, Honor. We've decided we could make good use of you in our organization if we can come to terms. I'll dictate the terms. And I'm taking over your organization. I know all about it. Even the Green Hornet might need help transporting secretly ammunition. Not from you, Gregory. All I want from you is the names of your associates. All right. You have the upper hand. I guess I have no other choice. Here's the list. Why did you ask for it? Another one, eh? What's your connection with this gang? I'm not one of this outfit. I'm after them. I'm a reporter from the Sentinel. The Sentinel, eh? That muckraking reform sheet. I suppose you're after the reward for the capture of the Hornet. Reward or no reward, the Sentinel's out to get you and the rest of the crooks in this town. Well, you keep me here, the rest of this gang's going out to wreck a train. And blame it on me, eh? Well, I'll take care of that. Phone the police. These men are wanted for munitions and gun running. And don't try to follow me. There she is. Report the caboose. Consequences. No, don't shoot. I'll talk. The others are up front. 
There are only two of us on the platform. Look around here. I had one of the crooks, but lost him when we fell. I can't be found here. Where's the car? attacked me before we could uncouple Robert's cars. Then the train broke in two on the grade. But Robert's stuff in the front section went through safely. Then we can thank the Green Hornet for breaking our hold on young Roberts. And that isn't all. Max Gregory was taken by the G-men last night. Look at that. The Sentinel was the only paper that had the story. There's some connection there. What do you mean? Just this. The Green Hornet uses the Sentinel as a mouthpiece. Makes a hero of himself through publicity. We've got to stop that by silencing the Sentinel. Hey, look here, boss. Gunnigan tells me you killed my story in the Cooper Zoo. That's right. But listen, that's a good yarn. The place is jinxed, I tell you. Accidents every few days. Some of the animals die without any good reason. A bear broke loose the other day and mauled a customer. The Cooper Zoo and Carnival is the only playground in this city. If we print that story, we'll put them out of business. Yes, but if it's true, the place is jinxed. It isn't true, and I don't believe in jinxes. If things are happening out there, there's a reason for it. We'll find the reason and then publish the story. Get Cooper on the phone for me, please. Yes, sir. Mr. Cooper, please. Mr. Reed of the Daily Sentinel. Oh, he has. Thank you. Mr. Cooper has gone down to the docks to receive a shipment of animals. Maybe we can catch him there. My car is right outside. Come on, Jenks. I tell you. office is down this way. Wait a minute. I want to look at this. You've got no business to see it. You came in on a press pass. Uh... That's the last word, Cooper. 
Up till now, we've just been playing with you. Giving you a little bit of hard luck. But unless you come across with five grand by tomorrow night, the Cooper Zoo is going out of business. But I can't raise the money. The shows haven't made a cent since those accidents started. I'm not interested in your hard luck stories. Unless you come across with five grand by tomorrow night. Yes? Well, the boys from the Sentinel. All right, I'll see them. Next. Wait a minute, I got an appointment for those fellas. Forget it. Tell him you can't see him. Okay. Tell Jenks I'm sorry, I can't see him. That's better. Talking to those reporters from the Sentinel is as dangerous as talking to the police. Told you I couldn't see you. Yeah, I know that, but you can't do that to me. I'm here by appointment, and I want an interview on those, uh, accidents you've been having. I've nothing to say. And why not? Is there something phony about your show that you don't want folks to learn about? All right, Cooper, get these men out of here. My business is important. No man with an honest business need be afraid to talk to the Sentinel. But if you're trying to cover up anything... That'll do, Mike. You know, we reporters never try to force interviews from people. You don't what? Sorry, Cooper. Better luck next time. Come on, Get those guys. The Sentinel's gonna be taken care of shortly. But unless you have that money here by tomorrow night. Where do you get that stuff reporters never force interviews? Listen, Lug, I wanted to get out. Unless I miss my guess, that other guy in there was Lefty Bates who did a stretch for extortion and blackmail three years ago. You're... All right, Miss Case, take this. In regard to your letter, here's the picture of Lefty Bates we made when he was a convicted. Well, what about the one Jenks took down to He's having developed. Here he is now. There you are, boss. If that isn't a picture of Lefty Bates, then I'm losing my memory. Nothing wrong with your memory, Jenks. That's the man, all right. That's fine. I'll give the police a tip and... Easy there. Sure, he's an ex-con, but that doesn't mean that he's doing anything illegal now. But the guy's working some sort of a protection racket at the zoo. By the way, he talked to Cooper's 10 to 1. He's got something on him. Well, you're probably right. But until you bring me concrete evidence, the Sentinel cannot make a charge. Oh, I'll get you evidence, all right. And a story that'll bust his racket wide open. Already, Chief. Sentinel reporters visited the Cooper Zoo today. I have made arrangements for the silencing of Britt Reed. Bates will collect $5,000 from Cooper tonight. Have enough men at the zoo grounds to take care of things in case of interference. That's all. Dean will get in touch with Bates and find out what arrangements have been made and then join the rest of you at the zoo. All right. <laughs> There is danger in the Hornet visiting the zoo, Mr. Britt. There are too many people, too much right. You forget there's a carnival there, Cato. A lot of the performers will be wearing masks. So it's the one spot in the city where the Green Hornet might go, among others, unnoticed. What do you expect to do here? 
We'll find out who's causing all the accidents and nab them. <laughs> be safe here. Oh, we're not doing any good here. This is a job for the cops. Sure, but the boss won't let us call them in without more evidence. What's the matter with you? I could have sworn I saw the green hornet. It's just one of those chumps running around in a mask. collecting for Bates and his gang. I collect for myself. Collect for yourself? Then you don't belong to Bates and his gang? Give me back that money. Or they'll wreck my zoo. They'll kill me. Keep back. Well, take care of Bates. From now on, you're dealing with me. Tell Bates that when he comes in here. Bates. You're on the collection, Cooper. Yeah, and suppose Cooper don't come across. I'm going to meet Bates by the cat cages in five minutes. If he isn't there, we'll go to the office and find out why. Ready, Mr. Britt? Not yet. Here, take this $5,000 protection money. It belongs to Cooper. Be ready for a quick getaway. Let's have the dough. Come on, make it snappy. The boys are waiting. But I... I haven't got it. You're lying to me, Cooper. I've had you trailed ever since you left here today. My boys were in the bank with you when you cashed the check. Well, that's true. But I gave the money to the Green Hornet. The Green Hornet? Yes, he was here ahead of you. I thought he came from you. You're lying. No. You can't stall me with that cock and bull story. Come across or I'll tip off the boys and they'll wreck your show. I don't think you will, Bates. The Green Hornet. Take your hand away from that gun. What do you want? A signed statement concerning your protection racket. I'll sign nothing. I don't even know what you're talking about. Oh, yes, you do. I just heard what you told Cooper. I want it on paper, and I'll give you 10 seconds to put it there. All right. I, Lefty Bates. Ex-convict. No, I won't do it. Right. One of those babies get loose and it makes this crowd stir their legs. Be more than one of them get loose if Cooper makes any trouble. They ought to be here by now. Come on, Corey, let's take a look. Oh, we might as well go home. Yeah, I think we had to. Give me some peanuts. Oh, yeah. Hey, look over there for the popcorn wagon. Two of them guys was in the car stealing racket. Thank you. You better get a cop. Cop, is it? Haven't I been a cop half my life? Come on. 
One minute, you mugs. I want a word with you. Sentinel men, get them. Hey, be careful, my started this fire in Stampede so he could collect more blackmail from Cooper. No. No, I haven't been doing any blackmailing. 
Perhaps this will persuade you to talk. No, wait, don't. Don't use it. It's true. We, we're making Cooper pay protection. What do you mean, we? Who are you going to take that money to? A man. I, I don't know. I, I think his name is Ogden. Ogden, huh? Yeah. Is he the man that's ahead of all this? I don't know. I swear I don't. <clears throat> My job's just collecting the protection money. What did you mean when you told Cooper that the Sentinel was going to be taken care of? Nothing. It was just a threat. You're lying again. There are worse things than being turned over to the police. Okay, all right. I, I'll tell you. The man's going to put a bomb in the Sentinel office tonight. At what time? It's set to explode at about 11 o'clock. All right, that'll hold you. Quick, Cato, take me to where I can phone. Yes, sir. This is evidence that Mr. Reed wants in one of those racket cases he's investigating. It's strange he didn't say anything to me about it. I can't help that. He told me to bring it here tonight before 11 o'clock. Mr. Reed is hardly ever here at night. He promised to meet me here. Jenks speaking. Oh, so a man's gonna blow us up. I suppose you're the Green Hornet. Okay, pal, I'm Napoleon. The Sentinel office, quick. This package contains very valuable evidence. Uh, do you mind putting it in Mr. Reed's safe? Very well. and go in the office, Cato. Why not remove your disguise and go as Britt Reed? I've got to do something that Britt Reed wouldn't do. There's no other way. Keep me covered at all times in case I get trapped. The Hornet got Bates and left him for the cops. I have a hunch that Bates is going to talk plenty. I'll get Monroe down here. It looks bad. You cover Williams at the Sentinel office in case the Hornet goes there before 11 o'clock. I can't wait any longer. Uh, you're sure you locked that safe? I took care of the safe. Stand where you are. Did this man bring a package up here? Don't tell him. He's the Hornet. He'll steal it. And you did bring a package up here. Would it induce you to find it if I told you that package contains a bomb to destroy this building at 11 o'clock? That's a lie. Where's that bomb? I, I don't know. Perhaps now you'll realize I'm in business. Where's that bomb? All right, if that's the way it is, I'll leave you tied up here to wait for it. If you know where that bomb is, Miss, you'd better talk. It'll explode in three minutes. Hey, what do you want? We're after a man in there. We're from Central. Why, well, you are not. I know you. You have one minute to tell me where that bomb is. If you value your life, you'll talk fast. All right, I'll tell you. It's in there, in Mr. Reed's safe. Open that window. You've got to get away before they catch you. He can't get away. He's trapped, and I'll collect the reward. Don't be too sure of that. 
police. You've got enough evidence to convict him. This will only render him unconscious for a short while. I won't let the police in until you get safely away. Thank you. I should thank you, and I do. What goes on? Who started the fireworks? Get those cops up here. I've got the man who tried to blow us up. Oh, I suppose you'll be telling me next the Green Hornet was here. He was, and he was wonderful. Oh, I give up. Before those men went in, I heard them say they'd have to help Williams. Got to trail them, Cato. They'll lead us to the man. The big shot we've been looking for. Come on, Cato. we've been looking for. The hideout of the big boss of the racketeers. You are going in there tonight? Now we have other things to do first. I told you not to come here straight from a job. You might be trailed. So what? Things are getting so tough it's the only place to go. What happened? Plenty. Somebody wants to send a mob to Williams' game. They heaved his bomb out of the window. And maybe him too. Bates must have talked. Maybe somebody else did too. There's been the smell of a double cross around here for some time. What are you getting at, you lud? Stop it! There's no time for trouble. Well, we got trouble, all right. Why don't we split our take and get out of here while we're able to spend it? You'll get yours when the time comes. And that goes double for me, too. Imagine the Hynet gallivanting around and me not here to catch him and collect that reward? And of course, Miss Case is so wealthy that she didn't need the reward. So she let the Hornet escape. Yes, and I'd do it again. Listen, I even heard it rumored around that you helped the Hornet escape. You know, that makes you an accomplice and just as guilty as he is. Guilty of what? Of cleaning up this city? They ought to pin a medal on him instead of trying to catch him and put him in jail. Treason! Oh, my golly, I'm beginning to believe she was in cahoots with him. Say, I should bring my card, will you? I've got to go home and pack. I'm going out of town for the weekend. Yes, sir. You sure Axford didn't see us come back? Yes, Mr. Britt. Good. We're going to investigate that place we discovered last night. You mean where those men went? In the car? Yes. Bates mentioned a man, Ogden, to whom he paid protection money. And there's a firm, a brokerage firm, Monroe and Ogden, occupying offices in that building. We will go there? Yes. I'm pretty sure that we'll find that Monroe and Ogden are the big shots we've been looking for. Quarter on the third floor. I'll take the fire escape. You might as well know, Monroe. We've been talking things over. What's the matter, turning yellow? No, but just as I told you yesterday, we think the job is getting too hot. Pete, come in here. Dean's 
raising a squawk. Is he talking for all of you or just for himself? That's news to me. I'm satisfied, and I guess Andy is too. How about it, Andy? It's okay by me. That's the chief signal. We'll see what he says. Yes, sir, we're ready. With regard to the question you put to me this morning, we have too big an investment at stake to give it up without a fight. The Green Hornet is giving us most of our trouble. He must be stopped, and the Sentinel must be silenced. We're carrying out the Chief's orders. Well, I'm still for getting out while we can. And giving up everything we worked for? No. We'll take the dough that's in that safe and split it up and lay low for a while. Ah, oh, we're wasting time. Let's bring that stuff up from the car. Uh, Dean and the boys can take care of that. You and I have an important call to make. Andy, you better wait here. I'll phone you in a few minutes. Okay. and watch for the return of the others. With regard to the question you put to me this morning, we have too big an investment at stake to give it up without a fight. Pretty clever, Monroe. Using a phonograph record to conceal from the rest of the gang that you were the chief. Use your gas gun if necessary. Sign of the others returning? No, sir. Get in that closet and speak into the microphone you'll find there. Hello. Hello. Can you hear me? Yes, that's enough. This gives me a great idea. Hello? Andy? Yeah. This is Ogden. The boys get there with that stuff yet? No, and that ain't all. How long will it take you to get back here? About five minutes. What's up? Pete just come back. He says he heard Dean and Corey planning to crack the safe and clear out. Well, you keep him busy. We'll get right back there. Now, if we can open that safe in a hurry, we'll make those crooks capture themselves. Where's Andy? Monroe told him to stay on the job. I'm looking for Pete, I guess. <laughs> Where's he? I don't know. What's that? The signal Monroe gets when the chief wants to talk to him. Let's see what he's got to say. Attention, Monroe. Pete and Andy have been caught by the police. They will talk. Get all the money out of the safe and take it to the Mortensen place. I'll meet you there later. And it's important to get rid of Dean and Corey at once, as we discussed. Oh, they discussed us, huh? And they're going to get rid of us. Come on, Corey, we'll beat them to it. And yeah, what do we do? Open that safe, take the dough, and get out of here. Oh, it's open. What a break. Let the double crossers have it.
gather up all that money and put it in the Black Beauty at once. There is a lot of it. Every cent of it must be returned to the men who were stolen from. Roberts, Cooper, and all the others. Imagine me sleeping there in the green harness delivering letters to me. And a most insulting note case, too. What does it say, Michael? My job is finished. Too bad you couldn't catch up with me and collect the reward. But perhaps another day is coming. So better luck next time, you wild Irishman. And signed with the seal of the green harness, no less. <laughs> uh, did I hit the front page with that story, or did I? I ought to read a byline after this. And what I'm wondering is, who gave you that mysterious tip that put you wise? The Green Hornet, of course. Judge Stanton and the police commissioner are here to thank the Sentinel for breaking up the rackets. Too bad the Green Hornet isn't here to take a bow. Hey, eh, Casey? Show them in. A resolution passed by the city council and signed by the mayor citing the Sentinel for its distinguished service in freeing the city of the rackets which were exacting such a financial toll. Hooray! Thank you, Judge Stanton. The Sentinel did its duty as it sought, and will do it again should it ever be necessary. He's the one who really earned it. Oh, take that thing down. Sure, it is a sight that makes the eyes of me sore. Let us stay, Michael. The Green Hornet is gone. He said his job was finished. And if we get Miss Kay sore, she's liable to call him back again. I don't believe he's gone. I believe he's just been too clever for us. And he's probably someplace close right now, laughing at us all for our stupidity. Miss Case, you're positively psychic. 